Hello everyone, this is Deepak Singhal. Welcome you all to the YouTube channel of Vidya Guru. So dear, this is my second uh, video for the October month. And here, I'll be talking about some of the important issues like Global Ambassador of ODI World Cup 2023, Mr. Sachin Tendulkar. India's first solar roof cycling track, uh, where it was inaugurated, will be, uh, will be explained in the class. Countries Congress has approved a bill that would abolish the income tax. So which country is that? Fasai asked customers and sellers to stop using the following for packing, serving, and storing food items. And the first Asian man to be nominated for International Tennis Hall of Fame and the World Teacher's Day. So, dear, before we proceed on for discussing the second video for the October month, it is just my humble request that if you are listening to my video for the first time, kindly like the video, share it with your, all of your friends, and also subscribe the channel. And dear, if you are looking for some uh, reliable course for banking awareness, SSC, CDS, or CTET, then I think Vidya Guru is the one you should try. Our admissions are open. Uh, just call a SAP in order to uh, book your seats, take your demo classes, and then decide. Because here at Vidya Guru, we surely work for your 100% success. So let's start with the current affair series. The very first current affair is talking about the legendary cricketer. Mr. Sachin Tendulkar has been appointed by ICC, International Cricket Council, as the global ambassador for one day, one day cricket World Cup starting in Ahmedabad from October 5th. Tendulkar has participated in the ODI World Cup uh, six times. Before the opening match between England and New Zealand, Sachin Tendulkar will come on the field with World Cup trophy and announce the start of the tournament, which has already happened. This is Mr. Sachin Tendulkar. Then we have something about ICC. It was formed in the year 1909, earlier headquartered in London, but it was shifted in 2005 to United Arab Emirates uh, in the year 2005. Membership in total countries, which are the members of ICC, are 108. Official language is English. Mr. Greg Barclay is the chairman and Imran Khwaja is the deputy chairman, whereas the CEO is Mr. Jeff Allardyce. Heading forward to next important current, it is talking about the state government, which has launched Mukhya Mantri Nirman Shramik Pension Yojana. I'm talking about Chhattisgarh. The Chief Minister of Chhattisgarh, Mr. Bupesh Baghel, and the President of Congress Party, Malika Arjun Kharge, they have launched the scheme called Mukhya Mantri Nirman Shramik Pension Yojana. And under the same scheme are the registered construction workers. So it is actually the construction workers who are aged 60 or older than this will receive a lifelong monthly pension assistance of rupees 1500. So dear, and this is for the period of 10 years. Again, I'm repeating this. Mukhya Mantri Nirman Shramik Pension Yojana. This is the scheme of Chhattisgarh government. So it is a state government, a state sponsored scheme launched by the Chhattisgarh CM, Mr. Bupesh Baghel, along with the Congress party chairman, Malik Arjun Kharge, president. This is uh, Krishak Shramik Sammelan, uh, <clears throat> the occasion where the scheme uh, for the pension scheme for all the construction workers who are 60 or above was launched. Then we have uh, India's first solar roof cycling track, which was inaugurated in Hyderabad city. So what an idea it is. So dear, actually this, this complete track, this complete cycling track has been named as Healthway. Why Healthway? Because it is a three lane track which is about 4.5 meters wide and with a strip of green grasses of one meter on either sides. The cycling track is about 23 kilometer long. So dear, if you are fond of cycling, then of course it is something which will make you a healthy human being. So apart from that means apart from your health, uh, this is 23 kilometer long cycling track and the roof of the track over the roof of the track, 16,000 solar panels have been installed which will generate the electricity equal to 16 megawatt. So again, so it is a double purpose trackway where your health will be supported. And on the other hand, the electricity generation can be done. Uh, this is how it looked like in Ahmedabad. Then we have elected president of Maldives. Again, this is very important. Opposition candidate, Mr. Mohammed. So opposition candidate, Mr. Mohammed Muizu has won recently the concluded presidential elections in Maldives. He has won against the current president, Mr. Mohammed Soli, by securing about 54% of the votes. 
so government of india or sorry government media has informed the mohammed uh, moizu has been declared the elected president uh, mr soli has won uh, had won uh, the presidential elections of maldives back in the year 2018 with a huge vote so maldives is a country which is in the south asia located in indian ocean this is mr the newly elected president of maldives mr mohammed moizu then we have a uh, 2023 sastra ramanujan prize again this is very very important mathematician mathematician rui ziang zhang mathematician rui ziang zhang an assistant professor at the university of california berkeley berkeley usa has been elected has sorry has been selected as the recipient of the prestigious 2023 sastra ramanujan prize and again i am repeating mathematician rui ziang zhang Uh, Zhang, an assistant professor at the University of California, Berkeley, USA, has been selected as the recipient of the prestigious 2023 Sastra Ramanujan Prize. So this award recognizes his remarkable contributions to the field of mathematics. Dear, the prize also includes a cash award of rupees ten thousand. Sorry, of dollar ten thousand. Uh, which will be presented during the international conference in number theory held in the hometown of renowned mathematician shri nivasa ramanujan at sastra university uh, kumbakonam during the third week of december again i am repeating i am talking about mathematician rui ziang zhang who is an assistant professor at the university of california berkeley america this is mr rui ziang zhang then we have uh, the indian state of uttar pradesh recently launched a scheme called jeevan ka aadhar aapka poshtik aahar means the scheme focuses on providing nutritious food to the children pregnant women and lactating mothers in the state so jeevan ka aadhar aapka poshtik aahar the scheme provides nutritious food to children pregnant women and lactating mothers in uh, in the state of uttar pradesh so under the scheme children in the age group of up to 6 years will be provided with a hot meal every day while the pregnant women and lactating women will be provided with a nutritious diet the state uttar pradesh has launched this scheme on 30th of september 2023 this is the cm of uttar pradesh mr yogi adityanath then we have argentina argentina's congress whereas uh, argentina is considered this is a south american country argentina congress has approved a bill that would abolish income tax so again a bill has been approved in argentina which abolishes the income tax and now the theories are on uh, which are deciding whether argentina is going to become a next level tax heaven like singapore or other countries like uae will argentina be considered as a next place as a tax heaven so let's discuss this the bill is now expected to be approved by the senate which is also controlled by the peronist the bill would eliminate the income tax for all the argentines regardless of their income level and it would also eliminate sorry eliminate taxes on the capital gains and dividends the government argues that the bill will help to boost economic growth and create jobs so again i am repeating this current because it is important argentina which is a south american country they have passed the bill uh, which abolishes the income tax however the bill is now uh, expected to be approved by the senate of argentina which is also controlled by the same party called peronist the bill uh, is going to eliminate all the income tax for all the citizens of argentina regardless of their income level now coming to the capital of argentina it is buenos aires president is mr alberto fernandez currency is argentine peso heading forward to next important current <clears throat> this is india and some index this is world talent ranking 2023 where india slipped four spots to stand at number 56th out of 64 economies in the world in 2023 world talent ranking compared to the last year position of india at 52nd
Now, the most important thing, the next current affair, it is about after the Valmiki Tiger Reserve in West Champaran district of Bihar. After the Valmiki Tiger Reserve in West Champaran district of Bihar is going to get a second tiger reserve in Kaimur district, which is to be known by the name of Kaimur Wildlife Sanctuary by the end of the year or early 2024. So at present, total number of tigers in the state of Bihar is equal to 54. National Tiger Reserve Conservation Authority has given its approval for this. Kaimur Wildlife Sanctuary is the largest wildlife sanctuary of Bihar across Kaimur and Rotash district. However, it was established in the year 1979. So now Bihar is going to get the second tiger reserve in Kaimur district. Next important current is about Google. The search giant Google has unveiled its earthquake alert system for Android smartphones users in India. Earthquake alert system for Android smartphone users in India. The system was developed in collaboration with NDMA, National Disaster Management Authority, and NSC, National Seismology Center. Of course, this is going to at least give you some, some time before the tragedy happens. This is the <clears throat> alert system, which everyone will be getting from the side of Google for all the Android users living in India. Something about Google, which got founded in the year 1988. Founders are Mr. Larry Page and Sergey Brin, headquartered in California, USA. Sundar Pichai is currently the CEO and Ruth Porath is the CFO. Heading forward to next important current, it is about Swachhata train. So recently, Ahmedabad Municipal Corporation, AMC, has launched the Swachhata train initiative as a part of Swachhata Pakhwada to promote waste management awareness and cleanliness in the center, sorry, in the city. So it aimed to raise consciousness regarding the significance of cleanliness and waste management within the city of Ahmedabad. So what is it? It is Swachhata train under as a part of Swachhata Pakhwada. Heading forward to next important current, it is CEO of FASAI, means Food Safety and Standard Authority of India, FASAI. Miss Kamala Vardhan Rao, Kamala Vardhan Rao issued relevant guidelines in this regard that FASAI has notified the Food Safety and Standard Packaging Regulations 2018, which strictly prohibit the use of newspapers or similar material for packaging, storing, and wrapping food items. Again, this is important. Again, I'm repeating, FASAI has notified that you cannot use newspapers or similar material like that for packaging, storing, or wrapping the food items. According to these regulations, use of newspapers for packaging, serving, or storing the food should be immediately discontinued as the ink used in the newspaper contains various bioactive substances that can contaminate the food and lead to health-related problems upon ingestion. So this is again going to be a very serious issue because various street vendors in India are still giving you the food items for eating over the newspaper. So it has to be immediately stopped. Then uh, this printing inks may contain chemical, uh, including heavy metals that can enter the body through our food. So FASAI, what is FASAI? It is a statutory body. Statutory body means a body which is not mentioned in the constitution, but created by some law. So established under Ministry of Health and Family Welfare Government of India. It was established by Food Safety and Standard Act 2006. Uh, getting to the next important topic, it is about uh, M.S. Swaminathan. M.S. Swaminathan, the famous agricultural scientist and the father of green revolution in India, passed away at the age of 98 in Chennai. So Mr. Swaminathan played an important role in developing some HYV seeds of paddy means high yielding varieties of seed of paddy. M.S. Swaminathan was born on 7th of August 1925 in Tanjavur district of Tamil Nadu. He was also awarded with Padma Shri, Padma Bhushan, Padma Vibhushan and he was also awarded the Raman Magsese Award in 1971. This is M.S. Swaminathan, the father of Green Revolution in India. Remember the time of Lal Bahadur Shastri. 
Then we have India's rank in Global Innovation Index of 2023. We remained at position 40 out of 132 economies in the world, which are ranked by Global Innovation Index, which is published by WIPO, stands for World Intellectual Property Organization. Whereas India moved from 81st position in 2015 to somewhat 40th position in 2023 means in less than 10 years, we have jumped to 40 places ahead in the global innovation index. This is how India is performing. Then dear, we have India won its first gold medal in the equestrian competition after 41 years in the riding competition. Again, this is important here. So India won its first gold in the equestrian competition. So what is equestrian? A, uh, equestrian in Hindi is known by the name like Ghur Savari, horse riding. Okay. After 41 years in the riding competition, the gold winning equestrian team includes uh, Anusha Agarwalla, Hridya Kirti Ch uh, Cheda, Divya Kirti Singh, uh, Sudip, uh, sorry, Sudipati Hazela. Uh, sorry if I, if I pronunciate anything wrong. Uh, the team uh, achieved a score of 209.205 to secure the gold medal. This is the equestrian gold medalist team of India. Uh, the first gold in equestrian since 1982. So we won the first gold in this in 1982. And since then, now the gold is coming. Asian Games were hosted by India in 1982. During that time, India won three gold medals in equestrian events. So after that, India won a gold medal in equestrian competition at the Asian Games 2022, which is being held in Hangzhou of China in 2023. So nearly, nearly after 41 years, we have won again the gold medal in equestrian competition of Asian Games. Then we have Yes Bank. Yes Bank has recently appointed Mr. Manish Jain as the country head of wholesale banking with immediate effect. Who has been appointed? Mr. Manish Jain has been appointed. At which post? Country head of wholesaling banking with immediate effect. He is going to replace Mr. Ravi Thota on this post. Last week, Yes Bank appointed Mr. Pankaj Sharma as the Chief Strategy and Transformation Officer. Yes Bank was established in the year 2004, headquartered in Mumbai. This is Mr. Mani, Manish Jain. Then here we have Reserve Bank of India. Reserve Bank of India has cancelled the license of Mumbai-based corporative bank that is Kapol Corporative Bank Limited, which Kapol Corporative Bank Limited and Reserve Bank of India has cancelled the license of this corporative bank, which is based in Mumbai. Reserve Bank of India said that the bank does not have sufficient capital. First, there is no earning potential. Second, due to which the decision has been taken. So there are two important reasons that why the decision has been taken. Although such decisions are taken by Reserve Bank of India under Banking Regulation Act of 1949. So Reserve Bank of India pointed out two major defaults or two major things because of which this decision was taken. So first is no sufficient capital and second, which should be there with every bank that is no earning potential. And apart from that, uh, Reserve Bank of India further informed that the, every depositor can obtain deposit insurance claim amount of his deposits up to a monetary limit of 5 lakh rupees from DICGC. Dear, if you are not aware with this policy, then let me tell you, Deposit Insurance and Credit Guarantee Corporation. It is such a kind of an insurance policy which is available with every depositor. If you have deposited your money, your hard-earned money with any bank, and if that bank fails because of any reason, then you guys can claim your amount up to 5 lakh rupees. So if you have deposited 5 crore in your bank account, in that, in that condition, you will be paid only 5 lakh. If you have deposited 50,000, then all of it will be returned back. And this is the insurance which, which is automatically given at no extra premium cost by DICGC. Something about Reserve Bank of India, we have already covered many times. This bank got established on 1st of April 1935 under Reserve Bank of India Act 1934. However, earlier it was established in Mumbai, uh, but later it was shifted. Sorry, earlier it was established in Kolkata, but later in 1937 it got shifted to Mumbai. And since then, 
the it is headquartered in mumbai only directors are appointed for the term of 4 year by government of india in keeping the reserve bank of india act 1934 first governor of reserve bank of india was sir osborne smith however first indian governor is c d deshmukh manmohan singh is the only governor who later became the pm of india and k j udeshi is the first women deputy governor of rbi then dear we have uh, indo pacific army chiefs conference held which is the 13th version and hind prahar hind prahar chief of armies conclave was held on 26th and 27th of september at manik shaw center in new delhi i am again repeating hind prahar chief of armies conclave which is a 13th edition of such a conclave held on 26th and 27th of september at manik shaw center in new delhi on the first day defense minister rajnath singh participated the conclave saw the participation of chief of army deputy chiefs of army from 30 countries even including united states of america and canada so canadian deputy chief of army major general peter scott also attended the event and stated that the political disputes because we know that india and canada they are not sharing some good relations past few weeks so uh, mr peter scott already stated here in the event that the political disputes are not going to affect the military relations between two countries and that is the spirit which should be followed by even every country in the world indian army chief general manoj pandey <clears throat> this is how the con uh, conclave started then here we have shashi dharan jagdishan shashi dharan jagdishan hdfc bank said that the reserve bank has approved reappointment of mr shashi dharan jagdishan as again the md of hdfc bank his tenure has been extended for another 3 years from october 27th we all know that this is mr shashi dharan jagdishan whose tenure has been extended for another 3 years for hdfc bank then here we have bhartiya bhasha utsav bhartiya bhasha utsav which is a 75 day program to celebrate indian languages is being organized in lucknow which is a capital of up padma shri award winners i said padma shri award winners and representatives of indian languages are participating in the program this festival is going to continue from uh, like this month uh, up till 11th of december which is also the birth anniversary of the famous tamil poet subramanyam bharti and also celebrated as indian language day so his birth <clears throat> date is celebrated in india as indian language day then dear we have the next important issue that is foreign contribution regulation amendment rules 2023 the famous fcra act of india foreign contribution regulation amendment rules 2023 was recently issued by ministry of home affairs so as per the revised guidelines ngos were mandated with fcra license to submit the details of movable and immovable assets created out of foreign contributions so what is this fcra act every institution located in india if they are getting any aid from foreign then they will have to disclose that aid to ministry of home affairs so as per this all the ngos who are maintaining the movable or immovable assets because of the contributions that they are receiving from foreign they will have to submit the detail of each and every asset they are maintaining this is issued by the home minister mr amit shah then dear we have bharat drone shakti exhibition 2023 i said bharat drone shakti exhibition 2023 it was inaugurated recently by defense minister rajnath singh at hindon air base uttar pradesh although the spelling is not correct it is hindon h i n d o n it is hindon air base in uttar pradesh it has been jointly organized by indian air force and drone federation of india so it is jointly organized by iaf and drone federation of india the formal induction of first drone that is c 295 mw transport aircraft into the indian air force was also organized in this event this is a glimpse of bharat drone shakti exhibition 
भारत ड्रोन शक्ति एग्जीबिशन 2023 दिस पिक इज कमिंग फ्रॉम द हिंडन एयरबेस ऑफ उत्तर प्रदेश देन डियर वी हैव बेंगलुरु बेंगलुरु क्लेम्स द टॉप स्पॉट फॉर ग्रीन ऑफिसेस स्पेसेस इन इंडिया आई सेड बेंगलुरु हैज क्लेम्ड द टॉप स्पॉट फॉर द ग्रीन ऑफिस स्पेसेस इन इंडिया अकॉर्डिंग टू सीबीआरई सीआईआई रिपोर्ट एंड व्हाट इज द रिपोर्ट नेम Indian real estate taking giant strides 2023 mid year outlook report so this report can be nicknamed as indian real estate report although the full name is indian real estate taking giant strides 2023 mid year outlook report so this achievement is a part of the broader trend showcased in the report which highlights a 36% increase in the green office spaces across india since 2019 now in the comment section guys will have to tell me that what do you understand by green office spaces this is how it looked like uh, <clears throat> then we have the elected uh, in a significant development within the realm of indian journalism k n shant k n shant kumar a seasoned media professional has been elected as the chairman of press trust of india again i'm repeating mr k n shant kumar who is a seasoned media professional he has been elected as the chairman of the press trust of india board of directors for one year term chairman of pti board of director for one year term this announcement came after uh, the annual journal meeting of pti board of directors held at news agencies headquartered in new delhi the press trust of india founded just two weeks after india gained independence in 1947 this is pti press trust of india and this is mr k n shant kumar then dear we have sankalp sapta sankalp sapta is a week long initiative launched by prime minister of india on 30th of september 2023 at bharat mandapam new delhi when at bharat mandapam new delhi संकल्प सप्ताह संकल्प मीन्स वेयर यू टेक सम डिटर्मिनेशन वेयर यू टेक सॉरी सो द संकल्प मीन वेयर यू टेक द रेजोल्यूशन टू डू समथिंग सो वॉट इज दिस संकल्प सप्ताह एंड वाई इट वॉज लॉन्च इट वॉज लॉन्च टू इंप्रूव गवर्नेंस एट द ब्लॉक लेवल इट इज लॉन्च टू इंप्रूव द गवर्नेंस एट द ब्लॉक लेवल the program aims to bring about positive changes in the lives of people living in the aspirational blocks this is sankalp sapta people are present in bharat mandapam on 30th of september then dear we have multiple multiple grand slam winner leander page emerged as the first asian man to be nominated for international tennis hall of fame in the player category so again i am multiple grand slam winner mr leander page he emerged as the first asian man to be nominated for the international tennis hall of fame in the player category this is mr leander page yes now uh, the 50 year old page was one of the six nominee announced for the class of 2024 so he will be competing with kara black anna ivanovic carlos moya Daniel Nestor and Flavia Panetta in the player category. Again, I'm repeating. He will be competing with Kara Black, Anna Ivanovic, Carlos Moya, Daniel Nestor, and Flavia Panetta in the player category. Lena, the Chinese player, became the first Asian player to get nominated in this International Tennis Hall of Fame in the year 2019. so now we have leander page the next important current is talking about union minister of micro small and medium enterprises department narayan rane inaugurated the khadi mahotsav dear the khadi mahotsav is organized by khadi and village industries in mumbai and it will continue till 31st of october and in this not only the khadi products are going to be showcased but local for vocal exhibition will also be organized again i'm repeating vocal for local exhibitions will also be organized in this khadi mahotsav for the indigenous people this is khadi mahotsav then the next important current is about is coming from chatisgarh 
the Chhattisgarh government has revealed various plans to provide homes to over 47,000 impoverished individuals in the rural areas. And why the home is being provided? Under which scheme it is being provided? The scheme is Mukhya Mantri Grameen Awas Yojana. For example, we have the central scheme of the central government that is Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana. On the same line, uh, Chhattisgarh government has launched Mukhya Mantri Grameen Awas Yojana, where 47,000 homes, 47,000 impoverished individuals in rural areas of Chhattisgarh are to be provided with homes. So the, dear, the initiative follows the failure. It follows the failure to implement Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana in 2021 as Chhattisgarh government could not contribute its required share of funds. This is Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Grameen and such like we have also Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Shahari. Then dear, we have the Bihar caste-based survey in which the total population of the people living following Islam in Bihar amounts to be 2.31 crore. 2.31 crore are the people who are following Islam in Bihar. This is coming out to be caste-based survey. Religion percentage and population, we have uh, three um, uh, most important headings in which uh, Hindu, uh, the total percentage of Hindu in the state of Bihar is 81.99% and the population is about 10.71 crore. Islam is the second most popular religion in Bihar, uh, which is about 17.7%. Total amount of people following it uh, is 2.31. Uh, Christians, uh, is the, I mean, Christianity is the third most popular religion, uh, where 0.057% are the total Christians, amounting to be 75,238. Sixth are 0.011%. Uh, equal to 14,753. Buddhist, uh, uh, it is equal to 0.085, higher than Sikhism and even higher than Christianity. Total number of Buddhists living in the state, uh, they are 1,11,201. And uh, like Jani, uh, it is about 0.0096%, which is about 12,523. So this is again the caste-based survey of Bihar. Then dear, we have the next current affair talking about the record was set on September 27th, 2023 during the 19th Asian Games. Sir, what was the record? Record is Nepal scored somewhat 314 runs for the loss of three wickets in 20 overs against Mongolia. Again, I'm repeating, Nepal scored 314 runs for the loss of three wickets in 20 over match against Mongolia. And with this achievement, Nepal became the first team in men's T20 international cricket to score over 300 runs. We have not even a single team uh, in, the, in the history of T20 international to ever score more than 300 runs. Nepal became also the team with most sixes in the single inning in T20 international, hitting a total of 26 sixes in one match. Tremendous. The highest scores in T20 international till now uh, is Nepal against Mongolia. That is 314 this year. Second highest is Afghanistan against Ireland. That is 278 for the loss of three wickets in 2019. Third one is the Czech Republic against Turkey. A. That is 278 for the loss of four wickets in August 2019. This is the team of Nepal. Uh, the fastest century in T20 international cricket that we have Kushal Malla of Nepal. That is, uh, he played just 34 balls against Mongolia. Uh, means the fastest man to have the century in, in T20 international. Second one is Mr. David Miller from South Africa. Just 35 balls against Bangladesh. Rohit Sharma from India is the third. Just 35 balls against Sri Lanka, he scored the century. So now Nepal is over the top. Obviously, the grounds uh, of means uh, the Asian Games 2000, uh, you know, 23, which uh, were organized recently in Hangzhou, were very small. Then we have Lieutenant General Raghu Srinivasan. Raghu Srinivasan assumed the role of 28th Director General of Border Road Organization. Again, I'm repeating. Uh, Raghu Srinivasan has been, uh, you know, he has assumed the role of 
28th DG of BRO on Saturday. The transition follows the super invasion of Lieutenant General Rajiv Chaudhary. So this is Mr. Raghu Srinivasan. Then here we have all the 100% or 6,650 villages in Jammu and Kashmir have achieved open defecation free plus model status. Again, this is going to make India more clean. Open defecation free plus model status. All the 100% villages in Jammu and Kashmir have achieved this, making it as the first union territory in India to do so. This is a significant achievement here as it means that all the villagers are now having safe access to sanitary toilets and that grey water and solid waste are being managed effectively. Then here we have outside India, uh, Dr. Outside India, Dr. Ambedkar, largest statue of Dr. Ambedkar will be unveiled in United States on 14th of October. Outside India, the largest ever statue of Dr. Bhimrao Ambedkar to be unveiled on 14th of October in United States of America. It is a 19-foot statue of Ambedkar has been named as Statue of Equality, which is going to be inaugurated in the Maryland. Ambedkar was an Indian jurist, politician, social reformer, also known as the father of Indian constitution. United States capital is Washington, D.C. President is Mr. Joe Biden of the Democratic Party. Vice President is Madam Kamala Harris. This is the 19-foot statue of Dr. Ambedkar to be named as Statue of Equality in United States of America. What a proud moment for all of us. Then we have Kong Thong. Kong Thong, which is a village situated in East Khasi Hills of Meghalaya, recently bagged the award at National Tourism Award 2023. Again, I'm saying Kong Thong, which is a village situated in the East Khasi Hills of Meghalaya, recently backed the award at National Tourism Award 2023. So dear, these awards are generally given by Union Tourism Ministry and Meghalaya implements the homestay scheme, providing a subsidy of up to 7 lakh rupees per homestay. About 300 homestays were sanctioned in the last year. It is because of this homestay scheme of Meghalaya, a Kong Thong has recently backed this National Tourism Awards of 2023. Then here we have the next important current talking about Tripura Chief Minister Manik, Shah, Manik Saha has launched the e-cabinet system at the state secretariat at the state secretariat to develop digital infrastructure in the state. I'm talking about Tripura, the Chief Minister Manik Shah has launched the e-cabinet system. And with this, Tripura has become the fourth state and second in the Northeast to launch e-cabinet system. Whereas Uttar Pradesh, Arunachal Pradesh, they have also introduced the e-cabinet system apart from Tripura and Uttarakhand. This is Manik Saha. Then here we have the tenure of State Bank of India Chairman, Mr. Dinesh Khara, again has been extended till August 2024, means till next year. Khara was made the chairman of SBI on 7th of October 2020 for a period of three years, which was going to be end this year on 7th of October, although his tenure is extended again up till August 2024. State Bank of India is a public sector bank headquartered in Mumbai, Maharashtra. This is Mr. Dinesh Khara. Then here we have Government of India has extended the tenure of Unique Identification Authority of India, means uh, the same authority which gives you Aadhaar. So, Government of India has again extended the tenure of this unique identity identification authority of India Chief Mr. Amit Agarwal by one year. Mr. Amit Agarwal is a 1993 batch officer of Chhattisgarh Kader and uh, this unique identification authority of India has been established by Government of India. Its main function is to issue the 12 digit unique identification number to every citizen of India, which is called your Aadhaar card number. This is Mr. Amit Agarwal, 1993 batch officer of Chhattisgarh Kader. Then here we have a World Teachers Day celebrated every year on 5th of October. Google is celebrating this with a special doodle. World Teachers Day was started in the year 1994 and this day is uh, organized in partnership with ILO, International Labor Organization, UNICEF and Educational 
international theme for this year was teachers leading in crisis reimagining the future and the last is the world habitat day which is observed on first monday of october every year to reflect on the state of our habitats and to emphasize the fundamental right of every individual to have access to adequate shelter this year the theme was resilient urban economies cities as drivers of growth and recovery and with this i end my bulletin for the october month dear if you have liked my video kindly like it share it with your friends and also don't go without subscribing the channel and dear if you have not joined any institute any coaching classes so far for banking awareness ssc cds ctet or any of the courses then kindly call the vidya guru number take your demo classes book your seats asap because the seats are being booked rapidly only few are left and dear surely here at vidya guru we 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 make sure that every one of you means every student of vidya guru should achieve success so dear with this note i end my class and will meet you in the next edition for the october month till then goodbye take care thank you